Yeah, I had a semi-recurring dream where either I was on, say, the 40th floor of a building or I was repairing something on the 40th story of a building. And I remember, I think in one of them, I live there and I'm in my living room and it, and it's doing this, like it's swaying, like the whole building is swaying in the wind and I'm feeling it like the whole time. And I started thinking like, how am I ever going to be comfortable in my house if it's moving all the fucking time? <laughs> And that was just a dream and I was terrified. And every every time I'm up there, I'm thinking I'm going to die. It's weird. It's a really weird feeling. And you don't have too many dreams either. No. I had a lot of dreams while I was in Japan. Yeah. And while I was in uh, India. Yeah, yeah. There's only a couple. We were talking about dreams. Um, what was that thing It's lucky to dream about, like – an eggplant, a hawk, and a – it was some Japanese thing. And Mount Fuji. Yeah, Fuji, and Mount Fuji was, in, yeah. was involved. Um, a dove or something, a white dove, and um, an eggplant. So we we're discussing how you can – That's that was one of our first uses for AI. When ChatGPT came out, we asked us to make a story, a mm. dream story about mm. an eggplant, a hawk, and a Mount Fuji. It tried – Yeah, we were trying to spare on that dream because apparently it's very good luck to have that at the start of one of the seasons or something, maybe at the start something. of the year. You want it to be your first dream. I thought you wanted a I thought you wanted a sex dream. I thought I that's would. what everyone's gunning for. Yeah. It's strange that you can't I, I've never had a uh, what do you call it? a lucid, lucid dream. Lucid dream. Where you fit where you're in control. No, where my, you know my dreams a, are out of where control. you know it's a dream and you recognize that it's a dream. That's when – and you you can control it at that point. Is That's the idea behind lucid dreaming. I remember I got really into it at one point in the sense that I thought, well, this would be a cool skill to learn. Oh, it would be because, amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be great. It would be fun. It would just be wild. You could fly yeah. in theory. Yeah. What would you do? I, I'd go – I'd want to be in a submarine. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a bunch of sex dreams in various locations. We'll start with a submarine. Sure. Why not? Yeah, hey, I, I had a sex dream, dream in a submarine. I, but I then had a I sex get... dream about one of our friends. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Have I told you this? No. I had a sex dream about Millsy. We're in, we're in a spa. <laughs> we're in a spa bath together, right? Yeah. And I think he was sort of, you know, um, I, I was he was on my lap. Right, <laughs> and I remember thinking, "This is weird. This is this is a bit weird." And and he he said he may have said he may have said, "Yeah, it is a bit weird," or he may not have. Um, it didn't like that was it. That's all I can remember. That's all yeah. I remember from the dream. It was um. So he was cool with it in the dream. Yeah, he was pretty. You'd comfortable. probably hope so. You'd yeah. probably hope so. It's my dream. <laughs> yeah. So I I don't know if I've told him that. I probably have. Um, no, I probably haven't. He, he can know now. Um, have you, you haven't had a weird one about Millsy? No. It's funny because he would have, like, you know. He probably, yeah, he hasn't entered my dreams that I'm aware of. Um, mm. but I don't really remember my now. dreams very well. Maybe yeah. that will be the little push you need to have a, a Millsy related dream. I have a, <laughs> a, a journal that I have next to my, my, um, on my bedside table it's got a little pug wearing a astronaut suit on it and um, I'll probably only write in it twice a year but if I have a dream that I just really want to remember because mm. I felt like mm. for whatever reason yep. either I thought it was really interesting yep um, or is somehow insightful sometimes I come out of dreams and I think that shit made so much sense like I've had some serious yeah, 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 insight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I yeah. fully, I fully understood and comprehended yep. the dream. Right. Yep. And so but I there'll start be, writing there'll be down holes some things. in that. There'll be holes in that. Oh, I remember big holes. And I after re <laughs> a minute or two, you start actually going through the dream, and you're like, "What the fuck was I thinking? How did that make any sense to me?" Yeah, I don't have a dream journal. I've never kept one properly. But while I was in Japan and India, I did have a lot of time to be. I was by myself a lot. So I did have a time to write down a few things 
And I do remember I wrote down two of the dreams that I had there while I was while I was there, and I wrote them out with like a lot of detail. And and like you said, while I was in the moment, while I was in the dream, it all made total sense, like perfect sense. Like you couldn't tell me it wasn't reality. And then, like I was saying about you poke holes in it, as soon as you read through the story, even just read through your own notes three or four times, you'll go, well, that's fucking – that doesn't make any sense and this is clearly fucked up and you feel silly for not knowing that it was a dream. Yeah, you feel silly for that making any sense. Any sense at all. Like why didn't I wake up after the right. dream and go just acknowledge um, that was really weird – Mm. It made no sense. It was mm. an amazing dream. But you come out of it thinking, mm. I learned so much. I totally get it and I, I want to record this. I didn't learn anything in mine, but mine were yeah, UFC yours, related. Yeah, UFC related. Yeah, Dana, yeah. you were talking to Dana. Yeah, I was at a. I was going to work and I went past some roadworks and um, I must have like run over a, a cone or something and Chris Weidman, who was working there on the construction site, said, oh, you fucking idiot. Like, what are you doing? And I said, "Oi, bro, your traffic management is fucking terrible here." And someone filmed it, this altercation between me and Chris Weidman, the foreman. And Dana White arrived at my house, knocked on the door. I opened it. He said, "My bro, this is blowing up on the internet. You're you're going to be a big star." Uh, it didn't go very far. Um, How's that for scouting, though? Like, oh. did you even fight Chris Weidman? In, I was a lightweight. Point, or you, no, I was a lightweight. I'm a but lightweight. did you fight him or did you just have a verbal altercation with him? We had a verbal altercation near Loftus so Street. based purely <laughs> on your trash <laughs> on talk. On Loftus, on Loftus. No, no, no. They weren't setting up Damn. a fight or anything. It's just that people saw thought the potential. that I was he in the saw right. No, the people potential. thought that I was in the right. And maybe Dana White was like jumping on like a bandwagon to take down Chris Weidman and just doesn't give a shit about him anymore, like wants him out or something. You know, I don't know. I don't know what's going on in Dream Dana's head. Right. 